So coming to today's game, we're we're finally at game 40 of 44. Just four games left after this. We're hoping the new patch comes up there so we can bring our stats over to next season. Yeah. Uh, pretty soon. I think it will. But uh, we're looking at the Beagles who are 19 and 20 going against these water bolts who are 17 and 23 quickly, closely showing up quickly behind us. The Beagles are contact specialists against the extreme speed demon water bullets. Starting on the mound today for her second to last regular season game is going to be the right-hander Fran Japani. It's good. It's good to know she's locked in. She throws the ball pretty hard. She puts a good enough movement on it and she's pretty accurate and she's up a little bit in those. Like I said, she's playing well recently. She's got a winning record at three and two. So she wants to keep it that way. She's got a three, six, six ERA. She wouldn't mind seeing shrink down a couple basis points and she's got a one, one, two whip. That's right. And uh, the notable players for the B-Wolves again, the, uh, Tried and true, Laura Franco. She's held that spot since she came to the team, and she's still in it now. She's got uh, excellent power. She's got better than uh, average ability to connect at home plate, and she's got uh, better than average speed on the base pass. So when she gets on, she can make things happen. She's hitting 362 on the season with five home runs. Haley Dexter is the superstar shortstop. Is back out in right field today. Um, he's got better than average power. He's got great ability to connect and great speed on the base pass. He's hitting 310. And uh, with four home runs, he's kind of had an up and down season this year. So hopefully he'll be able to start turning it on now as we start to get moved towards the uh, playoffs. Buster Biggs, the left fielder, again, we've said it before. He's in the past 11 games just been tearing up the league. Um, just uh, you can't get him out. You can't get him out. <laughs> he's got uh, great power. He's got better than average ability to connect at home plate. And he's got great speed on the base pass. He's hitting 421. And uh, and seven home runs on the season. So those are the notable players the Beavers will have out there on the field for them today. Well, those players are going to be facing off against starting pitcher for the Water Bullets, the right-hander Brentwood Garrison. Brentwood Garrison throws the ball fairly hard. He's got pretty average chunk on the ball. He's not as accurate as most, but uh, he's got a four and three record as well. So he's he wants to preserve his winning record. His ERA is a four eight two, and he's a one four seven WHIP. Yeah, and the notable, notable the, the notable players for the water <laughs> the water bullets. Uh, you just said, scat scat. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Cisneros at second base. She's locked in, and her her uh, attributes are pegged. She's got excellent power, excellent ability to connect, and she's got better than average speed. She's hitting two eighty five on the season, seven home runs. You got D Miners in left field who uh, played pr pretty well in those uh, that that last game. He's got better than average power. He's got pretty good ability to connect and pretty good speed on the base pass. He's hitting 287 with two home runs. And then Kent at first base seems like maybe she's uh, she's not completely healthy. She looks like she's maybe hurting a little bit, but she's got great power in the uh, batter's box. She's got less than average ability to connect, though, and about a little bit better than average speed on the base pass. She's hitting 233 with five home runs. She is, and uh, we're going to look at the lineup for today. Uh, <laughs> I'm not there. Okay, looking for the lineup today, getting that notice from the assistant coach. It looks a little something like this. Pete Hanley Dexter is a good old Dex is going to be starting off batting first. He'll be playing shortstop as well, followed closely behind by Billy LeBoink. William LeBoink will be in right field. Buster Biggs will play the other side of the outfield and left. He will bat third. Cleanup batting fourth. Laura Franco at first base. Batting fifth, the new home run leader on the, the B-Wolves, Bertha Banks. She's also locked in, so the, we'll use that to our advantage. Two very important people locked in today. Freddie Knox will bat six. He'll play second base. Giving Gina Torrens a little bit of a break. She's still tense. Not the best season for Gina Torrens, so looking forward to her coming back at some point. Yeah. Mag Magic Moore will bat seventh to play center field. They'll be followed by Eliza Peck, who will bat eighth and catch. Still filling in for Steve Monstour, and Fran Japani will take the mound. Like we say, she's locked in. She also throws the four-finger, the two-finger, the curveball, the slider, and the changeup. I love that repertoire. Me too. She's been pitching really well for us um, <laughs> in the, her last couple of starts, so I'm looking forward to this one. I'm hoping she can, uh, she can put some of these guys into a tense mode before we get out of here. Sounds good to me. Me too. Nice, nice little a afternoon game here at El Viejo. One last time this regular season before we head yeah. home and finish her off. Pete. El Viejo has not been nice to us this year. 
Freebooters beat us too. It's a good place. Water Bullets got Harris in right field, Miners in left, Cisneros at second base, Wade in center, Man at shortstop, Ayala at first, Bracketeer at third, Ramsey catching, and Garrison pitching. Coming up in the top of the first, Haley Dexteris, Billy LeBoink, and Buster Biggs. Brentwood Garrison will set up shop on the mound, and we'll get this one going as soon as the ump says those magic words. Here they come. Now the there he is. Dexteris, a shortstop, hitting 310, four home runs. 372 yeah. RBIs. That's in there for called strike. Strike one. Oh, that's inside. Almost got a hold of Dexteris there. Two straight balls, two and one. There's a smash. To Cisneros, picks it up, makes the throw to Ayala to retire Dexteris. One out. Billy LeBoy comes up like in a high pitch. It's tough to read Wait. Um, the garrison here. He's got that, that sidearm pitch. But uh, LeBoyne's going to try. I just got to, uh, boy, it seems really loud. Although everything's looking for Brett when Garrison's turned out. He's going to throw his uh, fifth pitch when he's ready. Here we go. And we're underway. First one's in it for a strike. Second one comes right in. He gets it. It's a hard Billy LeBoyne, but it's going mostly up into center field, waving it off. Is Wade going to make that second out? Yes, sir. Buster Biggs, the left fielder, is neutral and fit. He's hitting 421, seven home runs, 26 RBIs, two quick outs in the no. first inning. That one's high ball one. That's a smash to the shortstop man who picks it up, makes the throw in time to get Biggs for the third out. So coming up in the bottom of the first, Baca Harris, D Miners, and Ada Cisneros. Japani will take take the mound and set up, getting ready to get underway here. Well batted, the right fielder, number 50. Baca Harris hitting 256 with one over the wall. This season, 16 RBIs. He's mostly a contact yeah. hitter. Watches the first pitch, but goes outside, and that's thought it was a little bit outside, but the ump gave it to her. Japani starts the game with a strike. Right away here in the bottom of the first, still no score. Two quick strikes, and she's in the driver's seat against Harris, who played well against the, uh, the Buzzards. Smashes that curveball. Foul, luckily, for Japani. 0-2, oh, the crowd gets into it here. They like that. Japani's going to nice pitch high and inside. Freddie knocks over to grab it for the first down. That was a good final pitch there by Japani, who jammed him up and inside. Yeah, she did. <laughs> D. Miners is hitting 287, two home runs. I think we've seen both of them. He's got 10 RBIs. Good contact hitter. Watches the first pitch come in for a ball. One of the counts. D. Miners. Randy Plotty getting ready to throw a sixth pitch. Gets her signal from Peck. Mines up. Let's it fly. Gets it in there. Lowest part of the strike zone. Strike one. The crowd didn't like it, but I don't care. <laughs> she's, she's locked in and looking good. Another two strikes. Here's where she does her damage. Just gotta get him swinging at trash. No. Ooh, he doesn't chase trash. So now she's gonna have to be a little imaginative here, but a good thing Fran Japani yeah, is swinging at a strike three. That's a girl. Now she can put the best away, and she's gonna have to. Adis is narrows comes up, and she's got power. She is locked in. The outfield's gonna go deep on her. First one misses inside ball one. Second pitch. This is ball two. The infield's hmm. going to go guard the lines for Cisneros. Known as a whiffer. Strike two. One and two the count. In Japan, or I'm sorry, two and one the count. i trying to figure out where to go here. Cisneros getting ready to line one up. Hits it hard to left field, but it's going high. Buster Biggs back. And it's out of here. Over the wall. Cisneros jacks that one. Wow, that what an arc on that thing. It went 374 feet. It's her eighth home run and 24th RBI this season. And the water bullets jump out to that early one nothing lead. Trespass Wade comes up at 265 with three home runs of his own. More of a power hitter than a contact hitter, about average. He pops that one up in the right field. Billy LaPointe is waving him off in the smog and gets that third out to end the side. 
Well, coming up in the top of the second, Alora Frankel, Bertha Banks, Freddie Knox. Garrison threw eight pitches in the top of the first. Water Bullets with a one to nothing lead. Alora Franco, the first baseman, neutral and fit, hitting 362, five home runs, 21 RBIs. Oh, it would be nice for him to take one out here and even this thing up. First wow. one glides inside for strike. Oh, one the count. He thought that was a little inside. That was definitely outside. What a piece. That one's right in there. She swings early, pops it up, running yep. back as the catcher. Ramsey's going to pull that in. Too early. Bertha Banks, the third baseman, locked in fit, hitting 322 with that new eight home runs on the season. 21 RBIs. That first pitch is up, ball one. There's a smash along the third baseline, foul, one and one. That's in the gap between first and second. Baca Harris will pick it up, get it into second base, but Bertha Banks is on first with a single. That's our first uh, hit of the game here. Freddie Knox comes up at 375. He's got good contact. He's got a runner first. There's only one out. Hits that one hard, but it's a line down the right side foul. I'm one to count to Freddie Knox. That one go, misses. Go, go, go. She's going, Bertha Banks is going for second. She's going to slide in there safe. All right, all a right. wild pitch from Brentwood Garrison. Pitch number 17. Ah, Swinging this strike two. He's a little bit late. And that one's high. Good eye. Ball two. Locked up a two apiece with one out. Top second. Hits that one hard, and that one's going, and and uh, what's-her-face is coming home. She's going to slide in. Makes All it right. safe, Pete. Ties the game up. All right, way to go, Bertha. Magic Moore, the center fielder's neutral and fit, hitting 360 with three home runs, 17 RBIs. Freddie Moore is in there with a stolen base. Runner at second with one out, and Magic Moore standing in there. That pitch is in there. Count is now one and one to Magic Moore. That's a roller to the shortstop who picks it up. Oh, what's he doing? Oh. Uh, what, what happened? I got chug. Oh, no. Oh, dog nabbit. Uh, double play. I swear <laughs> I did not see Freddie Knox from the moment he left second base till he rounded. He was almost home. Oh. Uh. <laughs> I don't know if I'll be able to continue to broadcast. I think that's what it's got to be. It's got to be Justice Man, Colt Nyala coming up in the bottom of the second. God, that makes me mad. God. <sighs> okay, Justice Man, 212 with five home runs, 14 RBIs. He's a shortstop. That's in there for called strike. Strike one. Japani's up to 15 pitches already in the bottom of the second. That's yeah, to Bertha Banks. She'll pick it up, make the throw to first, and get Justice Wade. So Colton Ayala coming up. Colton Ayala playing first base for the Water Bullets. He's hitting 188 on the season. Yuck. <laughs> well, we were in a you know we were in a great position there, and I just you know base running mistake. Ball one, strike, uh, no balls, one strike. That's popped up into center field. Magic Moore is under it. Didn't have to move very much. He makes the catch for the second out. And Harry Bracketeer, the third baseman, he'll step in. Neutral and fit, hitting 200 with four home runs, eight RBIs. Score is tied, 1-1. One, one, one. That's fouled off along the first baseline. Out of play. No balls, one strike to Bracketeer. Swing in a minute, Bracketeer swung right through that one. No balls, two strikes, Bracketeer's in the hole. Two outs in the bottom of the second. Swing in a minute, Bracketeer goes down on strikes. That's a K. Coming up in the top of the third, Eliza Peck, Fran Japani, and Hanley Dexteris. Garrison's up to 22 pitches, giving up two hits. And one run. b -Wolves one run on two hits. Water Bullets one run on one hit. Now batting, Eliza Peck, the catcher's neutral and fit, hitting 222 with four RBIs this season. She She's doing better than she was most of the season. Hey, Watches the first. Oh, it makes it inside for a strike. Uh, one on oh, one of the count. She reaches out, pops that one up, and foul, yeah. but it's going to be grabbed by Al at first base. Now batting, yeah, this is barely playable. Fran Japani, the pitcher, steps in. She's hitting 308. Two RBIs on the season. That's in there for a cold strike. Strike one. 
That one's high. Ball one. One and one to Japani. That's popped up into center field. Center fielder's out there calling everybody off. Makes the catch. Trespass Wade with the catch in center. Two outs. Wow. And the next comes out. He's a tough out. He's over for one on the day. Hopefully go one for two. Ooh, he smashes that one hard to center field. It's going back, but it's going to be caught short of the track by Wade again for that third out. Dang, nab it. All right, well, coming up in the bottom of the third, Lennox Ramsey's first at back. Brentwood Garrison, the pitcher, and Ibaka Harris, the leadoff man, will be back up. He's 0 for 1 on the day. Japani's thrown 21 pitches with two strikeouts, giving up one hit. The score is tied 1 1. Lennox Ramsey, the catcher, she's stepping into the box. It's a power hitter. Oh. I'm talking when I should be pitching. <laughs> well, let me talk for crying out. I want to know what kind of the Linux Ramsey. Bottom of the third, one apiece for both teams. Strike one there. We're even up at one at one apiece. Ben Japani getting ready to throw her 24th pitch. Throws it. Ooh, he gets it. She gets the top of the strikes on there. Wow. One and two. Oh. She's ahead in the count. She's looking for her 25th pitch. Gets a signal from Elias Beck. Winds up. Throws it. Swing and a miss strike through the beautiful slider. Beat. There she goes threw. the bat toss. I was going to say, she threw her bat. She should be out of there. <laughs> Brentwood Garrison. The she should pitcher. be in the showers. He's <laughs> got more uh, more power than most pitchers. He can put one out. Buster Biggs running over. Makes that grab for out number two. Baca Harris comes up. He's 0 for 1 on the day. Chewbacca Harris. Generally a good contact hitter. Japani throws the first one to him. Misses high and inside. Just off the hands. Ball one. Two outs in the bottom of the third. One on the count. Low and away. That one makes it in there. Strike one. The crowd really reacting to every pitch here. Pops that one up high inside. Laura Franco's going to run over and grab it. If she doesn't run into Baca. <laughs> one, two, three. Heading into the top of the fourth. Score still tied at one. Billy LeBoink 0 for 1. Buster Biggs 0 for 1. Alora Franco 0 for 1. Garrison at 28 pitches with giving up two hits. Come on, B-Wolves. Make these guys work here. Billy, Billy LeBoink playing right field for the B-Wolves. He's hitting 358 on the season. He favors the high pitch. That's in there for a cold strike. That's off the handle there to... Justice man. I don't think it's Justice man. <laughs> yes, uh, it was a back, well, anyway. So yeah, Buster Biggs comes up. That was a bad pitch to swing at for um, Billy Blank. Now uh, Buster Biggs, you can't expect him to go over for the day. Watch the first pitch come in, strike one. Oh, on the count. Second pitch comes in, strike two. Oh, and two the count. It's in the driver's seat. Brett McGarrison ah. swinging with a bad pitch, a three pitch strikeout. Ah, 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 ah. Rising fastball. Alora Franco, 0 for 1, hitting 359 with a five, five home runs, 21 RBIs. Two quick outs in the uh, top of the fourth. Garrison is on right now. He's up to 34 pitches. Swing and a miss, and Alora Franco's in the hole, 0 and 2. There you go. She gets a hold of that one, and Cisneros picks it up, makes the throw to first to retire the side. Wow, Garrison is rolling here. He's wheeling. It's really going to be a battle of the pitchers. D minors, Ada Cisneros, one for one with a home run. And trespass weight, 0 for one. Coming up against Japani, who's thrown 29 pitches with three strikeouts and a hit. Score is still tied, folks, 1-1. One one. D minors is tense but fit. Tense but fit, playing left field for the water bullets. That's a smash, but it's foul along the third baseline. No balls, one strike. That's in there for a ball. <laughs> oh, what? What, a, what it was. Oh, oh no. my. That's going deep, deep, deep. And that's out of here. Right over the La Idiota sign in left field. That one traveled 374 feet. And that's his third home run and 11th RBI of the season. D Miners goes deep. Ada Cisneros now is locked in and fit. She hit a home run her first time up, and the Water Bullets have taken a 2-1 lead. Japani went from being locked in to neutral. Count is even. One ball, one strike to Cisneros. Allen's low ball, two. Two balls and one strike. Cisneros, the second baseman for the Water Bullets. 
she is solid at second base. That's a uh, ground ball in the center field, a clean single for Cisneros. So they've got a runner at first. Trespass Wade, the center fielder today. No outs, Cisneros at first base. There's a shot. That's going to roll into center as well. And very quickly, there are two runners on. Water is threatening here with a runner at first and second with no outs. Justice Mann, the shortstop, steps in. He's 0 for 1 in the day. And the pressure has come up a little bit on Japani. That one's low, ball one. Throw back to the second baseman. He kind of muffed the ball, but luckily it didn't go anywhere. So the runners were unable to advance. Ooh, it's waiting on that one. Buster Biggs makes the catch and throws the ball into second to hold the runners who are unable to advance. So still runners at first and second, but one out. And Colton Ayala, the first baseman, steps in. He was fooled completely on that pitch. No balls, one strike to Ayala. Low. Allen's low. Evens up the count. One out in the bottom of the fourth. Water bullets with a one-run lead. That one's low, too. Two balls and a strike to Ayala. Swing and a miss. And Giappani got one past Ayala there, so evens the count at two now. Swing and a miss. Ayala goes down on strikes. That was a huge strikeout for Giappani. Runners at first and second with two outs. Bracketeer, the third baseman, steps in. Two outs playing the batter. That's in there for cold strike. Japani is going right at these hitters right now. No balls, one strike to Bracketeer. That one was outside, which was good because he anticipated that one. Mm -hmm. Count is evened up. That's a little low and Peck picks it up. Oh, throws oh, it to the wrong yes. base. Way to go. Oh, I meant to do that. <laughs> did, it, did I just say she threw it to the wrong base? I meant she threw it to the right base at the wrong time. That's it. That's all. <laughs> so in the top of the fifth, Bertha Banks one for one, Freddie Knox one for one, Magic Moore 0 oh for no, one. Garrison has thrown some pitches, Bertha, he's had dang. some strikeouts. Bertha Banks is locked in and fit. Boy, I'd like to see her tie this one up again. Whoosh. Misses inside. Way to get out of the way there, Bertha. One over the count to Bertha. That one's in there and she smashes it hard, line drive, but it's oh, come on at the one. Come on! The second baseman. <laughs> Freddie Knox, the second baseman. One for one with a single and an RBI. Ah, I'm back to I can't get it out. Oh. That one's outside. Ball one. One and oh. That one's high. Ball two. That's in there for called strike. Garrison's locked in right now. Up to 42 pitches. Two balls, two strikes to Freddie Knox. Oh, just caught the inside corner for a called third strike. Freddie Knox goes down on strikes. He threw three straight there to finish that off. Yeah, he's doing, Brandon Garrison's doing well. Pitch number 44. Smash to Magic Moore. That's going deep enough, and it's gone, Pete. The game is tied. Way to go, it's Magic Man. About time. Jeez, OP. <laughs> Crushes that one. 403 feet to right center. It's his fourth home run. Only his fourth and 18th RBI of the season. Now and the B-Wolves are back in it, Pete. Way to go, Magic. Eliza Peck, the catcher's 0 for 1 today. Neutral and fit in 217. She's been slumping a little bit as of late. Takes the first pitch low. Ball 1. Uh -oh. Ooh, just off the... Uh, Tip of the bat. Ayala is over in the foul territory, makes the catch to retire the sides. But the B-Wolves pick one, one more up, so it's 2-2. Uh, Harry Bracketeer, Lennox Ramsey, and Brentwood Garrison all stepping up in the bottom of the fifth. Japani's at 47 pitches with four strikeouts, and giving up two hits. And the two of those are home runs, so it's you just got to be careful with these guys. They do hit the long ball. Um, Harry Bracketeer comes up. Again, he's uh, mostly power, about average power, a little less than average contact. So we'll see what Chapani does. Throws and glides the first one there for a strike. One on the count. Bottom of the fifth. Now we got a 2 2 ball game. Check swing, strike two. Chapani's quickly in the seat. Number 40. Likes where she's at, winds up, tosses. Strike three. Three pitch strikeout. He never swung the bat, I don't think, Pete. No, sir. Lennox Ransom comes up. She's 0 for 1. She's got good power. 
not very good contact. So uh, movement on the ball, she could drop her. She's doing 50 pitches here in the fifth inning, which isn't too bad. Ten pitches an inning. It's a curveball the outside corner, strike one. Crowd Should I do like it? Chapani did. Should I do it, viewers? I don't know. Should, I, should I do it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tommy can't see. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I had, like radical, two. I had the radical right over her head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and two the count. See if she puts her away. Swing three. Swing and strike. Wait, there goes the bad toss. Two quick Ks. And now she could get in Brentwood Garrison's head to close this out before he goes back on the mound. Like we said before, pretty good power for a pitcher. But can he chase that breaking ball? He does not in that first one. Strike one. The pressure's up here. Pony's going to try and put him away. Ooh, puts movement on that, but doesn't get it quite in there. We're one and one with two outs in the bottom of the fifth. That one drills it in there. Nice two-finger split. Makes it inside. Corner swinging strike two. One, two, a couple Garrison. Hope we can get out right here. Swing and miss strike three. Three Ks in a row, Pete. What an inning. That's it. Coming up in the top of the sixth, Fran Japani, Hanley Dexteras, and Billy LeBonk all, LeBoink all over for the day. Garrison at 46 pitches with two strikeouts, giving up three hits. B Wolves, two runs on three hits. Water Bullets, two runs on four hits. And we got a tie game. Japani over for one hit. She's hitting 280. Oh, I'm hitting. She's a, she's a good contact hitter for a pitcher. She's, she's good for anyone. Watches her first pitch coming for a strike. Second pitch outside, ball one. Good patience. One knotted up at one apiece. No. That one's her pitch. She reaches up, but she pops it up to Cisneros in second no. base. One down. She's fired. Get her out of here. <laughs> Hanley Dexter is 0 for 2, hitting 306. Come on, superstar. This is what we pay you for. That's in there for a cold strike. One out in the top of the sixth. Oh, that one's ripped foul along the first baseline. Two strikes. That one's low. One and two. Garrison seems to be trying to stay away from Dexteras. There's a smash into right field, but right at Harris. Baca has to step up a little bit and make the catch. Boy, these, uh, these, this side of the lineup's got to start putting it together. Billy LeBoink's 0 for 2. Hoping to go 1 for 3 at least. First Whoa. pitch. Boy, get out of the way there. The Boinker. Second pitch is right in. He smashes it, but it's fouled on the right side. One apiece. Top of the sixth. It's that one hard, but it's right to Cisneros. It's one, two, three. What a game so far, Pete. Dag nab. Yeah, the water bullets are tough, man. They are not going away easily. Baca Harris 0 for 2. D Miners 1 for 2 with a home run and a strikeout. Ada Cisneros 2 for 2 with a home run. Japani at 57 pitches, 7 strikeouts, 4 Ks. And we're still locked up at 2 here. Hazy day here down in Florida. Baca Harris, the right fielder. That one's inside. Harris made that catch in the top half of the inning. Evens the count up at one and one. A swing and a miss. And Baca Harris finds himself behind in the count. One ball, two strikes with no outs. That's fouled straight back. And he will get another pitch. One ball, two strikes. Here it is. And there's a roller to Bertha Banks. She's going to pick it up. Double pump. Make the throw across the field to Franco to get Harris for the first out. D minor is the left fielder. Neutral and fit. One for two with a home run and an RBI. The home run I can take. The RBI I can't. That's mm -hmm. in her for a called strike. I'm split, but I'm splitting hairs. Go ahead. <laughs> one ball, one, no balls, one strike. <laughs> There's a shot, and oh, ah, she's going to throw, throw it. it. She held Bur it. Oh, there you go. Again, I got a little, little lag there. Bertha Banks, with a hot smash from uh, the last batter, was able to throw him out after a little uh, chugga chugga choo choo. Two outs. Ada Cisnero stepping in. She's locked in and fit, hitting 294. She hit a big home run earlier in the game, too, to start the scoring. Put the water bullets up one to nothing. Since then, the B-Wolves and water bullets had fought to a 2-2 tie. The count is now two balls, one strike with two outs to Ada Cisneros. And that's a flare. And, oh, foul ball. Bertha Banks 
gave it her best shot. Two balls, two strikes with two outs. Cisneros known as a whiffer around. Oh, and she doesn't even whiff. She just <laughs> <laughs> left the bat on her shoulder. Um, Buster Biggs, Alora Franco, and Bertha Banks stepping up. Garrison up to 57 pitches with two strikeouts, three hits. And the score is still locked up at two. Two ball, uh, two to two. Buster Biggs, the left fielder. Neutral and fit. 0 for 2 on the day. Hitting 416 on the season. Biggs has really been on a tear for a while here. Takes the first pitch low. Ball one. There's a roller to man at short. He picks it up. Makes the throw to Ayala to get Biggs. And uh, Garrison gets a little bump in his mojo. <laughs> Laura Got Franco's also, also 0 for 2 on the day. She touches the first pitch come in low, ball one. Good patience there by Franco. Gonna wait till he throws something good. Ball two. Hasn't happened yet. There was Garrison. Was, ooh, that was right in there. She crushes it, but it's foul. Giving him a, oh. an idea of what might be coming. Instead, if she hits it high. Shortstop goes over just as man catches it for the second out. Oh, man. Buster Biggs, the third baseman, locked in and fit. One for two with a single. Had a two-run two home run. Two-run two run home run game in the last one. That one's high. Evens the count at one and ball, one strike. There's a smash, and I think Bertha yes. Banks has gone yes. deep again, Tommy. Holy cow. <laughs> I remember when we started our career as the La Cidiotas. That's right over the sign, 410 feet. That's her ninth home run, 22nd RBI of the season. Bertha Banks may mess around here and get herself on the board with the most home runs in the league. She loves it here in Florida. And that well, she punished him for putting that right where, she, where he should not have gone down the middle. Freddie Knox up now. Watch the first position of our strike. It's now 3-2. Beebles lead in the top of the seventh. That one outside corner, ball one. Knox is patient, one apiece. Hits that one hard into his own dugout, one and two. Punches that one. It's on the ground to Ayala. First tosses it to Garrison and ends that side. Yuck. All right, so uh, B-Wolves have gone up. 3-2. Trespass Wade, one for two. Justice Man, 0 for two. And Colton Ayala, 0 for two with a strikeout. Japani's at 69 pitches, eight strikeouts, and giving up four hits. Trespass Suede center fielder's neutral and fit. He's known as an RBI man around this, around this, around the pool, around this place. I would, you know, I, I think Pete has every run so far been a home run. Yes. What a, what a get five home runs. The only way they really get on, they haven't been able. No team has been able to put together enough hits. Quick two strikes by Japani against Trespass Wade here. Pitch number seventy-two, way outside. Wade wasn't going to go for that one. Wade's mostly a power hitter. Good contact as well. Granger Pie thinking about it. Winds up, lets it fly. Hits that high curveball into the dugout. The V Wolves. No. Sticking at one and two. Right down the middle, and it's going to drift foul over the V Wolves dugout. Three rows back. Pete didn't like that pitch. Pitch number 75 looks like this. Swings and fouls off a nice slider on the outside corner. Pitch count coming up. It's that one little liner to Frank who's going to scoop it up and on the run, run it down herself in that first out. Yeah, he wasn't going to. <laughs> no. Wasn't going to let comes, me strike him out. <laughs> Here comes Justice Man. I think he's 0 for 2 on the day. Grand Japani still got a little bit of gas in the tank. Misses outside ball 1. Crowd's getting into it here. They want Justice Man to tie this up. There makes it in for a strike. And now we're even at one apiece. And now Man has been released. He's got five home runs on the season. Finally, he's got to be a little careful. Ooh, the slider misses outside. Ball two, two and one. Here comes pitch number 80. Low and inside strike two. Nice split finger. We're locked in a two apiece. She's going for out number two. Swing to a strike three. She's still putting K's beat late game. Colton, Colton Ayala comes up. He's up. Oh, and he goes down. They're going to pull Colton Ayala and bring in backup first base person to to pinch hit Amelia Kent. Amelia Kent is not quite 100%, but like we said before the game, I think she's one of their notable players. She's yeah. a real good power hitter. A little bit of contact. She's got power against lefties, but she's facing uh, Japani, who's a right-hander. So the outfield's going to go deep for Amelia Kent. First pitch, check swing, strike one. I think we saw Kent play out in Colorado when we were out there, Pete. She looked good. She anticipated that one. It goes high to right field. Billy LeBoink back. 
Oh, it bounces off him. It bounces off him. I think he jumped and he didn't have to. He could have caught that one at the wall and he it bounced off him. He dug on it. That that should have been the third out. Here comes Harry Bracketeer over two. Got two outs, a runner at second base. She's just got to put away Bracketeer and we'll get a, a reliever in in the eighth inning. She can do it. She knows it. She's in control. Bracketeer's got more power than contact, but he's not great. He anticipated that first pitch. Slider inside misses. The pressure is up here in Florida now. Waterbolt's threatened. Low misses that one. Two and oh, the count. 85 pitches under her belt. Number 86 misses inside ball three. And now Japani's in a tough spot. Three and oh to Harry Bracketeer. Pitches out on that one and walks him. And now we got, she's going to get to Lennox Ramsey. Who's over two. Good power, poor contact. They're going to pull Ramsey. They're going to bring in Ariel Parker, left fielder. She's going to pinch hit. She's more power than contact. She's a good power hitter, not a great contact hitter. So Japani can put movement on the ball. She can get her swinging at bad pitches. And here's her first pitch. It's a little liner to Freddie Knox, who's going to pick it up, throw it to first, for that third out. All right, as we head into the top of the eighth, Magic Moore, one for two of the home run. Eliza Peck, 0 for two. Fran Japani, 0 for two. Garrison's at 70 pitches, two strikeouts, giving up four hits. B-Wolves with a 3-2 lead. B-Wolves with three runs on four hits. Water Bullets with two runs on five. Now in the game, number six. Ariel Parker, the pinch hitter, will be, uh, rem will be li uh, lifted in order to bring in Smoke Show, the uh, Smoke Snow, I'm sorry. Smoke Snow, the catcher. <laughs> Uh, he's got no errors, 276 average on the season, three home runs. He's tense, and he's not fully healthy. Uh, he's got less than, uh, he's got a little bit better than average speed, a little bit better than average, about average fielding, and a little bit better than average arm. And he'll be taking over, and now at first base, Amelia Kent and Smoke Snow have come into the game. That's a swinging bunt, and a Kent, and... The throw to Kent retires the first batter. Eliza Peck. She's tense. She's over. She's gone. Two or over three. And they're going to pull her. They're going to bring in Steve Monstour, who's been playing well. Peck is still struggling. Monstour's got good power against right-handers. With the pressure up, Monstour brings good offense to the game. It's really exciting to see what, what he might be able to do here. First pitch is in there for a strike. A one to Steve Monstour. Second pitch outside, ah. flubs it. The liner to Cisneros, picks it up, throws it. Two down. Dang, damn it. Fran Japani, the starting pitcher, is locked in and fits. She's 0 for 2 on the day, though, hitting 267. Two RBIs on the season. Two outs in the top of the eighth. There may be a substitution here for Japani. And Japani's going to take a seat, and Poke Foster's coming up. Poke Foster's hitting 391 on the season. No home runs in RBI. He's neutral and fit. He does not have very much power. He's got very good contact and uh, not a whole lot of speed down the base paths. Poke Foster. No, Poke. Pops that no. first pitch into right field. And Harris makes the catch and retires the sides. <laughs> so coming up in the bottom of the eighth, replacing Fran Japani will be... Benson Rushmore, the relief pitcher. Benson Rushmore has a 5.74 ERA, a 1.54 whip, 21 strikeouts. He's neutral and fit. He's uh, got uh, about average velocity, a little bit less than average junk. He's, uh, his accuracy suffers a little bit, but he's uh, almost fully well-rested. He's got a four-seam fastball, a two-seam fastball, a slider, and a curve. And he's going to take over duties for Japani. Brentwood Garrison 0 for 2. Baca Harris 0 for 3. D Miners 1 for 3 with a home run and a strikeout. Rushmore taking up duties on the pitcher's mind. B Wolves 3. Water Bullets 2 as we head into the bottom of the eighth. Brentwood Garrison 0 for 2. Oh, he's going to get lifted here. And they're going to pinch hit for Brentwood Garrison. They're going to let uh, Menace Wrestles, uh, the right fielder, come in and pinch hit. He's hitting 288 on the season, four home runs, 14 RBIs. He's neutral and fit. He's got 
uh, very, uh, very good um, power. He's, he suffers on contact, but he has also has very good speed on the base pass. So if he can get on base, he can make things happen. So the first test for Rushmore will be to get past Menace Wrestles. So that one's low, ball one. Allen's outside, ball two. Two balls to Wrestles. Looks like there's some empty seats in there, in those stands there. Ball three, three balls and no strikes to Menace Wrestles. Hitter's pitch coming up. That's in there for a called strike. Three and one. Russell's pinch hitting from Brentwood Garrison, who had a heck of a game today. That's in there for called second strike, and the count has gone full. Three balls, two strikes. Swing and a miss. Menace Russell's goes down on strikes. Hopefully that's not going to come back and bite him as they lifted Brentwood Garrison for that. Brent, Baca Harris, the right fielder, steps into the batter's box. He's going to take a look at Benson Rushmore. There's a shot, and that's going into, uh-oh, bad throw. Oh, uh, left field. Yeah, that's going into left field uh, to Buster Biggs, who then threw it to first base instead of second, which wasn't smart because that allowed the runner to get to second. So uh, Baca Harris at second. There's a swinging bunt, but it was foul. Rushmore steps off the rubber and forces the runner back to second, keeping him honest. Ball low. That's in the dirt, ball low. Count is even, one ball, one strike with one out in the bottom of the eighth. That's in there for a second strike and Miners finds himself behind in the count. One ball, two strikes. That's in there for a call, third strike and D Miners goes down on strikes. Two outs now with Ada Cisneros, the dangerous Ada Cisneros stepping in. Two for three with a home run. Runner at second. Tying run is at second. Lead run standing at the plate. Two outs. That's fouled off along the third baseline. Out of play. No balls, one strike. That one's low. Cisneros with a reputation of being a bit of a whiffer, although she's been on fire as of late. Two balls, one strike with two outs. Rushmore delivers. That's fouled off along first baseline. The count is even. Two balls, two strikes with two outs. And again, Cisneros as a whiffer. That's fouled off hard along the third baseline. Rushmore looking for the right pitch to put past her. That's fouled off again. Boom off the... Supplementos de la Fuega, or whatever. Mm -hmm. I can. That's in there for cold third strike. Way to go, Benson Rushmore. <laughs> and Cisneros throws the bat. Menace wrestles the right fielder. He's going to get pulled after that horrible job of pinch hitting. Boo, boo to you. Billy Bond, the <laughs> relief pitcher, will come in. He's hitting 470, 470. He's got a, no, he's not hitting. He's got a 4.74 <laughs> ERA. A 1.58 whip, 29 strikeouts. He's neutral and fit. He does not have a whole lot of velocity. His junk is about average, and so is his accuracy. He's fully rested, though, so he's got some energy going. He's got a four-seam fastball, a slider, and a changeup. As we head into the top of the ninth, B-Wolves, three runs on four hits. Water Bullets, two runs on six. Haley Dexter is 0 for 3. Billy LeBoyne, 0 for 3. Buster Biggs, 0 for 3 with a strikeout. And Bond setting up shop on the pitcher's mound. This is the heart of our lineup. This, this part needs to start putting some runs on the board. Dexter is 0 for 3 today, hitting 304. 0 for 3, Dexter. That's not good. Ball inside. Ball one. Top of the ninth inning. Hopefully the oh, Beebles can get no. some more off and get that insurance. He pops that up to the shortstop. J-Man gets that just past the infield. Now too early, too early. Billy LeBoyne, 0 for 3. He likes the high pitch, playing right field for the water bullets. 0 for 3, though, today. That's smashed foul along the third baseline. That one's inside. Ball one. One and one to LeBoyne. There's a smash in the left field. That's going to be a clean single for LeBoyne. And the B-Wolves got somebody on base here. The left fielder. Sir, Buster Biggs. and Buster Biggs is up again 0 for 3. This is yeah. 413 on the season, so I can't imagine he'll go 0 for 4. 
First pitch is never a strike. Only 80 miles an hour for Billy Bond. It doesn't throw very hard. Seventh pitch, it's hard down the line, and everyone's going to be going. Around from second to the minors, the throw to the third, he's to slide, and he gets in there. It's a nice double. All right. Second and third. Well, Laura Franco, the first baseman's tense, but fit. She's 0 for 3 on the day. Runners at first and second with only one out. Franco takes the first pitch for cold strike. Strike one. That's smashed up the middle, and that's going to be into center field. And Billy LeBoink has just crossed the plate because, you know, he was waiting for a cab or something. I'm not sure. Bertha Banks. <laughs> Bertha Banks, two for three, the home run, a single and RBI, and it's a 4-2 Beebles lead. You feel good, good about this guy. Runners at the corners. They try to pick off Laura Franco at first base. They don't get her. One out. Pressure's way up. That was way outside, ball one. Bertha Banks is a patient and dangerous hitter. Inside corner, ball two. She's the most walked batter on the team as well. I think we know that. That one drifts inside, ball three. She can just watch. He's not going to be able, Billy Bond's not going to be able to strike her out. Four pitch walk and the bases are loaded. For Freddie Knox, who's one for three with a single today in an RBI, he's hitting 374, feeling neutral. Neutral and fit pressure is up. I'm Billy Bond. Oh no! There's a bunt! Foul. Foul ball. That's inside. One and one. To Freddie Knox. That's in there for a called strike. One ball, two strikes. Base is juiced. That's popped up into center field. And here comes. No. And a double play. Double guys. Dang it, and that was Buster Biggs. He should have been a lot faster than that. <laughs> well, he's shallow center. 4-2, yeah, that's true. I probably should have. Trust Fast Wade, 1 for 3. Justice Man, 0 for 3 with a strikeout. Amelia Kent, 1 for 1 with a double. Benson Rushmore has thrown a couple of pitches and done a couple of things. Trust Fast Wade, the center fielder's neutral and fit. He's 1 for 3 with a single. He's known as an RBI man. So Rushmore can't rest on his laurels here. Number 44 has got to make sure he gets a lot of real strong pitches into this good power hitter. First pitch misses outside. That's not what we're looking for. 4-2, <laughs> bottom of the ninth inning here in Florida. Strike one, one apiece. Beeble's hoping to get one win off these water bullets this season of a three-game matchup between these teams. The water bullets have the first two. That pitch makes it for strike. He's one and two. That's a rush for throw number 22. Misses outside. To trespass Wade. Let's see if he can get one here, Pete. Winds up, throws it. Yeah! Uh, nice curveball. Tip of the hat from Wade. One down and two more to go, Pete. Justice Man, the shortstop, comes up. He's 0 for 3. Been blanked all day. He's looking tense. Normally more power than contact. He's a good average batter. Whoa, that one off the hands. Misses inside ball one. Count. More score winds up, throws it. Ooh, got that outside corner. That was really outside. I don't know if the crowd liked this. One apiece, one, one, one to Justice Man. That one makes it a nice slider, I think. A low pitch, one and two. He needs one more from Justice. Do you get him chasing something? Oh, nice inside corner, split finger, and he kisses the biceps. Two strikeouts, two down. And Amelia Kent's the only thing standing between him and the save. She is, I think, one for one. Amelia Kent, she's not quite 100%. She's a good power hitter. Magic more gets that one in for a strike. The outfield's going to drift back a little bit. They're going to play deep for Kent, who could do damage out there in the outfield. Misses outside ball one, one apiece. Where's the rush board getting ready to throw pitch? Number 30. There it is. Inside ball two. Two mm. <laughs> Two one the count. Two outs, bottom of the ninth. Lines up. Curveball popped up in the right field. Billy LeBoy coming over for it. He's going to grab it. And that's it, Pete. The B-Wolves win. All right. All right. I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> Wasn't pretty, but I'll take it. It was a good matchup. What a, what a division rivalry. It was. It was a good rubber. I mean, well, not rubber match because they've taken the first two, ga two games out of, of the three-game series. But, uh, yeah. It was a good I mean, one. Look at the, the only the Beebles win seven hits, six hits, only thirteen total hits in the game. It was a great pitching duel. Waterbolts yeah. get the first one. Beebles answer. Waterbolts get the next one. Beebles answer. Seventh inning, the Beebles get one. 
No answer from the bullets, and then a ninth he had the insurance. That's well played. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Bebo's with four runs on seven hits. Water bullets, two runs on six hits. Uh, I don't know what the, uh, again, Dexter is 0 for 4 on the day. Uh, Peck mm -hmm. goes 0 for 2. Uh, Monstour, 0 for 1. And then the... the uh, bank, two. Yeah, for she's three, with two playing. Runs and a home run. She's playing lights out right now. An RBI she, and a walk. The only I, thing I she didn't do was strike out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I hope she did. Uh, she doesn't fizzle out before the playoffs. <laughs> yeah, me too. Me too. And then over there on the other side, like uh, Harris, Baca Harris, D minors, uh, one for four. Each were one for four. Cisneros two for four. Really, the only one who hit five hundred. Trespass yeah. Wade, he's one for four. And then Amelia Kent, who subbed in, she was one for two. But outside of that, nobody else on that team got a hit. The B Wolves rack up fourteen Ks on the day. Wow. That's, I like nice. to see that, yeah. And it's a, a home run, I mean, four home runs, the two for each team. So yeah. it, was a, it was a day of the long balls, just as Mann goes over four. Yeah. When we're looking at pitching, uh, we start Fran Japani for the B-Wolves. She gets the win, I and mean, she should have. She gets, she throws seven innings, gets only yeah. five hits in seven innings, two earned runs, walks one batter, drops nine of them, gets two home runs off her, but this is a yeah. powerful water ball team. Her ERA, ERA drops to three five three. She's now four and two on the season, and she's not done. She's got another regular season game. Her last game will be the last game of the season. Benson Rushmore comes in and gets that save to add to his numbers. He throws two innings, gets only one hit off him, throws five Ks in two innings. Yeah, <laughs> and he only gave up one hit. I mean, that's yeah. crazy. That's <laughs> that's his, crazy. His, his ERA drops to five three four. He's now two two two. Two two two. Yes. And over for the water bullets, Brad, uh, Brett, Brett, Fred, Brad, Brad. I think it's Benson Garrison. Benson, that's it. That's it. I know. I, it's just, you know, I know the Garrisons. They're tight. They live down the street. Um, Brett, <laughs> Benson Garrison, he he gets the loss. He, he went eight innings, only gave up four hits and three earned runs. He had two strikeouts on the day, gave up two home runs. His ERA is at 4.62. And his record um, falls to four and four, so he's at 500. Bond came in, pitched one inning, gave up three hits, almost equaled Garrison in one in output in one inning that get, it took eight innings for Garrison. He had one earned <laughs> run, one walk. His ERA is at 4.85, and his record's 1-5-0. And, oh. and the three stars of the game, holy cow, look at, th look at this. <laughs> who else? Bertha Banks, the third, the B-Wolf third baseman who, who uh, has also been playing lights out in this 11 game stretch or 12 game stretch at this point too uh she went two for three with a home run and rbi scored two runs well yeah you know you, you, you can never can tell in the season that's this length or yeah. about midway through the season i'm thinking what do why do we need bertha Banks? <laughs> yeah what is she doing other than occupying a bit but she's really turned things around she's definitely one of our best she's taken over for um for buster pigs at least in these last few games uh, she's followed the second the second star of the game, the B-ranked starting pitcher Fran Japani, who so many times makes it to that to the top three list when she pitches. Yeah. She threw seven innings, five hits, two earned runs, one base on ball. She's uh, she's a diamond in the rough. Yes, she is, and like you said, it, she's been pretty steady. Um, when you think back to the beginning of the season, I mean, Fran Japani um, twice in the beginning of the season took hard shots. From yes. batters, and and we lost her for for a little for a little while, and then she comes back, and she's just been crazy. Little known fact about her: she can take a punch. Yes, she can. <laughs> she can. And then the third star of the game was the A-ranked Ada Cisneros, the second baseman. Again, you know you can't stop her; you can only hope to contain her. She went two for four with a home run and an RBI, and she scored a run. So. Tommy G, four hits, one home run, two RBIs. He had six strikeouts, a 46% contribution. Pete J with his big three hits. I'm <laughs> telling you, three hits, one home run, two RBIs. I had one stolen base and eight strikeouts. I got a 54%. Uh, I'll take it, like I said. I, I don't, my thing is, I don't, I don't know if I'll be able to continue broadcasting. 
I like doing oh. it, and I want to get better at it, but I just don't think my machine can do it. And and it is chugging just so much that it's. Yeah. I'll, I don't. I'll do that next season. I'll take over everything. Okay. <laughs> I'm just joking. Tommy Naperville. Well, I mean, I, I, I'm really hoping to upgrade my CPU, but at this point, um, uh, the timing is just off. And, like, there's a couple times that Bertha Banks ground ball where um, I, I literally just locked. I mean, it, it, she, it, she got the ball. The dugout, yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's because it kind of, I kind of moved her to her right to get the ball, and then it, it lagged. So it just continued, <laughs> just continued Moving going there. that right, and and I'm it like, it's funny. She picked it up, and it looks like she was just like she thought it was the third out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> where's she going? That oh, turns around and throws it. Luckily, she's got an arm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was lucky. And again, earlier in the game, um, the base running, it, the same thing. He's coming around, and I I'm doing a, a speed burst because I'm trying to get her to outrun the you know see how far I could get him and I wanted him to stop at third but then it lagged so he just rounded third and kept going and I was like well no <laughs> no that's not what I wanted you to do so well, uh, it is an issue it is an yeah. issue so I don't know how much more I'll be able to do I like doing it I really wish my machine would yeah. do it better though go ahead yeah well anyway uh, I was just going to say uh one good thing about uh, we're wrapping up that we'll wrap up here then get back to Phoenix where we'll end out the season at home so we're done with the, the road games. One good thing about being done with the water bolts, we will not have to face them in, in the postseason. Whatever happens, it's either us or them. Uh, we won't be playing them. I don't they're not going to win the wild card. So we got 13 games <clears throat> to report on before we can tell you where we're at in the standings now at this point. Pete, that first game is going to be the Houston Jacks visiting the San Diego Moonstars. You want to run that first? You ready? I certainly will. So, yeah, the Jacks travel to meet up with the Moonstars. And the Moonstars take an early lead, and it's a back-and-forth battle, but the Moonstars win 7-3. Then the Moose go visit the Jacks. It's 3-1 Moose. Wide load in the Moonstars. It's wide loads 4 to nothing. The Jacks and visit the Gold Coats. It's just these two teams, and it's 5-1 Jacks. The Heaters and the Overdogs, and it's all Heaters all day, 8-1. Wild Pigs visit the Platypi on the West Coast, and it is 4-1 Platypi. The wide loads visit the Moonstars, and it's a back and forth battle. Moonstars take it five four. Sandcats visit the Warblers in Colorado, and wow, the cats jump out quick, and they break out in front nine to five. The hot corners in the herbivores, and it's hot corners four three. Overdogs and the front runners in Philadelphia, it's overdogs four two. All right, the blowfish in the freedom, and it's the blowfish eight three. Moonstars visit the grapplers up in San Jose. Jesus, and it many, is a grappler's 12 to 3. How many Moonstar games? Moose and the Crocs, the Crocs 7 1. It's like all Moonstars all day. <laughs> what did they, of... they take the middle of the season off? What, what the hell's going <laughs> on there? <laughs> uh, you want to, yeah, yeah, you want to start us off with the Pioneer Conference, dude? Sure. Pioneer Conference Pathfinder Division, the Moose, with a record of 26 and 15, are holding first a four game lead. Uh, in first place over the Blowfish and the Crocodons, who are sitting at 22 and 19. They got to be the favorite. Uh, in the Uncharted yeah. Division, after all those games, the Platypi have regained first place. They've got a 22 and 19 record, and they got a two and a half game lead now late season against the, the New York Wild Pigs. They seem to be putting a little distance between them and the Wild Pigs. Uh, down in the Journey Division, our sister team, the Sandcats, they're 24-17. and 17. They hold a slim half-game lead over the Arctics, who are sitting just behind them at 23-17. and 17. And really, it's just by virtue of the fact that the Sandcats have played one more game than the Arctics. Yeah, yeah, that's that's still a toss-up. I'm hoping yeah. for people to leave that up. Uh, the Explorer Conference, Seafarer Division, yeah, that is the uh, the the Detroit Heaters have gained first place now. They got a twenty four and seventeen record, and they are just a half game now in front of those Houston Jacks who are who are twenty three and seventeen. Uh, the point to note the Overdogs. I mean, this last time we saw them shed a couple big name players, uh, Ronda Horn and Rocket Man, the Rocket Rocket Ramon. I, I still can't get my head around that. <laughs> I still, you're at the coming toward the postseason. You're letting you're gonna get some money, at, but who are you gonna pick up? Like, I don't know. Yeah, they're rebuilding. Are you get better than than Ronda Horn. You know who, I, they, who yeah. do you think to get for? Her? But 
Yeah, and that's the thing is that my first reaction when I saw that was we should get her, but then I'm like, you know, but we got Bertha Banks playing lights out, so yeah. yeah. Um, but they just what they just won a game too, so whatever mm-hmm. they did, yeah. Mm-hmm. In our very own trade division, the B Wolves back at 500 with a record of 20 and 20, and they hold a three game lead over um, the Nemesis and the Sirloins, who are just uh, who are tied for second with records of 17 and 23. That's interesting because our first game back home, home is going to be against those nemesis, so that'll be quite a matchup. And we're back it, at 500, yeah, you said. Tw- yeah, that's going to be a good one, too, because, again, that three-game series is split right now. So we traveled out to Hawaii where the nemesis play, and we split with them. We went, we won one, we lost one. So this is the rubber game of the uh, of the series, and the uh, winner of this is the winner of the, of the season set. So the it's going to be a tight one. Yeah, the Curiosity Division, uh, down there, the Saw Teeth have regained first place now. The San Jose Saw Teeth have the 22-18 and 18 record. They have only a half-game lead against the Colorado Warblers. And, um, yeah, I mean, that's that's a close pop-up, too. Now, if we go to the season standings and look at the wild card race, Pete, I'll start at the Pioneer Conference. Um, you get those, you know, the Moose, the Sandcats, and the Planet Pie are all first place right now. But all of those, except for the Moose, the Sandcats and Planet Pies lead is tenuous. Uh, so those other teams that get first place over the Arctics have the, not only are they battling for first place in their division, but they have the, right now they've got the, the lead on the wild card race. They're a game and a half ahead of the Blowfish. Uh, if the Blowfish came up closer, they got a plus 36 run differential. I think, and look, and that looks like the best in the league. Yeah. For a team that's 22 and 19, They've scored 36 more runs than they've been scored on. That's impressive. Yeah, and just just behind there, uh, um, the uh, burners with a plus 32. So, again, with baseball left to play, um, if the burners wind up, you know, tied with the Arctics or, you know, or the blowfish, like you were saying, then, by, you know, if they wind up with the same record, by virtue of the run differential, that would give uh, the, the blowfish or the burners the uh, nod over the Arctic. So, yeah, it's this is the fun time of the season where everything everything st- you want so badly to start nailing things down so you can start thinking about who you're going to be playing, and yet everything is so up in the air and can change so quickly. You know, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so it makes it fun. Over in the Explorer Division, the uh, division leaders, heaters, the heaters, the saw teeth, and the bee wolves would all get a first round bye. They'd be, you know, just brought right in, and then the wild card contender right now are the Jacks, and their record of 23 and 17 gives them a half-game lead over the frontrunners and the Gold Coats. But again, even if the Gold Coats and the frontrunners could tie up with the Jacks, the Jacks still have the the uh, the go-ahead with the plus 23 run differential. And when you look at the Explorer Conference, or the Suck Conference, as we should call it, because <laughs> with the exception of the Jacks and the frontrunners, and the wide loads, but the wide loads have a plus four. I mean, everybody else in wild card contention is all negative. They all, <laughs> yeah. I kind of got to think that maybe the Pioneer Conference is going to fare better in I the play. Think, yeah, I, on paper they're the, <laughs> yeah. they're the stronger. But now we, to, to be fair, though we played very well against a lot of those teams. Um, but. Uh, I don't know about you. I mean, the Sandcats beat us. We beat the Platypi. The Moose beat us. The yeah. Moose are really the favorites. Yeah, I mean, with a, a winning percentage of point six thirty four. Uh, and they've got yeah. you know Nacho Crisp. So that's... Nacho. <laughs> um, I want check- I want Nacho. I'm hoping Nacho Crisp plays second base because I want my infield to be Hanley Dexterias and Nacho Crisp. <laughs> well. Speaking of Hanley Dexter, Pete, I'm going to the news here. Uh, since the, Who was the talking game, about Hanley Dexter? <laughs> I'm talking to the news here. We got uh, our Hanley Dexter shed a few pounds after about a food poisoning. So I guess he had the shellfish. <laughs> I told him not. To. And it wasn't uh, quite. He's, his speed goes from 87 to 94. Oh, wow. I'm yeah. telling you, because he's a 99 in fielding. Right, a ninety-four now yeah. in speed. What was the other bump he got? I don't know. He may he may be the best player in baseball, <laughs> and he doesn't play that way. Like, no, yeah, no, he doesn't. 
And then the uh, Moose, they signed Wedge Wagner, replacing Lionel Martinez. So Wedge Wagner did not hang out on the free agent wire for too long. No. Wedge Wagner just got cut by the, uh, Overdog. the uh, Overdogs yeah, and after the last game. So uh, in the space of uh, 24 hours, the Moose have decided to pick up Wedge Wagner. And boy, that's, I mean, talk about, you know, the rich getting richer, you know? <laughs> yeah. And you know, um, Lionel Martinez is not is not bad. I mean, he's uh, but he's you know he's a B minus um, first yeah. base left fielder. He's got seventy two power, forty contact. He's good. He's a good fielder. Uh, I mean, but yeah, Wedge Wagner was well, he was on waivers for a day. That's yeah. amazing. The shortstop he starts his, his first season at age twenty five for the Overdogs. Is there the whole season? They let him go. And now he's ma- now he's making a he's making a multiple of what he made before, and he's yeah. playing for a team that's favored to win the whole thing. Yeah. Yep. And yeah, and yeah. Like I say, and then you talk about the moose, and with the addition of Wedge Wagner, all they do is they lose a little. They lose five off of the fielding. Yeah. But outside of that, he they pick up twenty five on power. They pick up uh, four on connectivity, which again, that's kind of a push. But um, you pick up twenty nine on speed, so he's gonna, you know, he's gonna be a problem on base paths. Uh, you lose right. five on fielding, but he's still over, you know, over seventy percent. That's not. And then his well, they, arm, you pick up forty four on the arm. Yeah, well, they they paid for it. Uh-huh. I mean, presumably they're not looking to get much money left on the table at the end of this. They're kind of they're going all in on this season. They they've got it's, the lead. They want. It would seem that way, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because the ring. They got the uh and and he's also got the moniker of being an RBI man. So that's who you want for, you know. (laughs) And he's twenty five. So again, he could you know, as you go into the off season and you start to think of what's gonna be our core, how are we gonna you know what I mean, what are we gonna do? He could very well be one of the main parts of you know, the main core of your of your team. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't even play a full season with the team in his first season. <laughs> Going up from there, uh, Smoke Frederick, someone we were looking at, lowers his asking salary. He was asking 980s down to 94. We'll just keep an eye on him. Yeah. And then Rocket Ramon, he lowered his asking price to uh, $7,400,000. He was uh, I, asking for 7.8 after being released by the Overdogs. I put him, I starred him after the last one. He's like, oh, the Rocket Man. I got I to I gotta, I gotta keep an eye on the Rocket Man. Well, I was uh, I was watching the game again. I watch our own games, guys. I know it's weird, but I I like to watch our own games. And at the end, when you said Rock and Ramon, the first thing out of your mouth was, "I want him." Yeah, <laughs> I want the Rock and Ramon. Get his get his agent on the blower. I want I want to talk money. Let's get him over here. Let's get him a steak and a cigar <laughs> <laughs> and a whiskey. See what he see what he says. All right, um, going up from there, uh, Eliza Peck. She's got new training available to her weightlifting which could give her five, five door power, a 5% chance to gain an inside pitch preference. So we'll see. That's pretty good. Yeah. And then we go up from there and Mohammed Smalls got gets signed onto the nemesis replacing Javier Hotter. And uh, Javier wow. Hotter was uh, a B second base shortstop. He was 31 year old second base shortstop. He had 84 power, 63 connectivity, 37 speed, 66 fielding, and a 41 arm. And he was making 7700000 They pick up um, Muhammad Smalls, who's a 36-year-old third-base shortstop. He's an overall C+, plus, 51 power, so they're losing 33 on their power. He's a 55 in connectivity. They lose 8 on that, so it's kind of a push. Uh, they gain one in speed, which, again, is negligible. They, you're not going to see one in speed. Uh, f- his fielding is down 18, and that's big because he goes. You know, they go from having a 66 fielder to a 48. That's less than 50%. That's not good. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure I understand that, that move. Uh, we'll see Smalls maybe in the next game. It's got to be a money thing because, uh, yeah, mean, we, you know, we've, We've played against him. We've seen him play. He's good. He's a B. Yeah. You know, he's a B second base shortstop. Uh, well, I, I like him. I mean, uh, power eighty four, contact sixty three. I don't think he'll be on waivers uh, the beginning of next season. No, I don't. And like, uh, I I don't know. It seems kind of weird. Uh, we do have a game against the Nemesis. I I kind of would have 
thought they would have waited till after. Because if they yeah. could, if they can win that game again, that kind of gives them a little bit of boost. They get closer in the standings, and there's a possibility they could take. You know, I mean, they might be able to uh, to steal that first place berth mm-hmm. from us. But you know, to to make a move like this almost seems like they've they've already they're already waving the white flag. Well, real quick, since already doing a long form uh, post game show, I was just going to check the league leaders uh, coming up after game 40. We only got four left. I'm looking at batting average. Buster Biggs leading the league in batting average. Not just that, though. We have four batters in the top 10 for batting yeah. average Buster Biggs, Magic Moore, Elora Franco, and Billy LeBoink. Wow. Yeah. Now, Laura Franco has been struggling as of late. She's She was up yeah. closer to 400 before, so. For home runs, we're going to be facing Jock Sports and the Nemesis. Uh, he's he's tied for second in the league for home runs at 13, so he'll be yeah. someone we got to be careful with. Yes, he's he also, will. He's also seventh and runs batted in. And Rhonda Horn is ninth, and she's got no team affiliation. <laughs> yeah, she's, yeah, she's on waivers, and she's – that She's is like, horrible. Uh, it's just horrible. RBI is 35 and you let her go. I I don't know. Yeah. There is no good reason for that. It's just <laughs> on base percentage, Buster Big second, 4.441. Nemesis yeah. got Jack Sports. He's at 406. Yeah. Slugging percentage, Bertha Banks at 0.602 just makes the list. Around the horn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sixth at six point point six two zero. Jacques Sports at six forty four, just above her. Um, it looks like it. I mean, you know, just uh, don't pitch to Jock Sports. <laughs> just yeah. let him be a walk. Yeah, be careful what you throw to him. Yeah, I don't even yeah. know where he's at. We'll find out soon. But uh, batting hits, Buster Biggs leading the league in hits by not a small margin. Seventy. Wow. No, 70 that is hits. not a small margin. Yeah. He's 12 more than Billy LeBoink, who's second. He's tied yeah. for, with Jack Cracker. Just quietly. You know what I mean? LeBoink just shows up to the Paul Park and does his job. You know what I mean? But Buster Biggs is he's MVP. He's got to be. Yeah. Extra base hits. I can't. Rhonda Horn at 25. She's second. What, and they what, just what? they just cut her loose. Get, get on the yeah. horn with, <laughs> with yeah, Santa get, Monica there. What the heck? They're just... <laughs> Get the get around the horns agent on. We'll get her a steak and a cigar too. All right. Uh, strikeouts. We don't have anyone with a strikeout. What happened to? Uh... Oh, these are strikeouts. I was so gonna say they. Yeah, these these are batters, yeah. not pitchers. Betting for stolen stolen bases. Stolen Buster, Buster Biggs. Big. Yeah, he's got to get a couple more. We got to start to put some distance between him and Yoink Sacks. We're gonna see Yoink Sacks at the last uh, last game of the season. We are. We are. So there, stealing, there may be a little bit of a, 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 a an internal battle, you know, outside just not just the game, but there'll be the fight between Buster Biggs and Ewing Sachs trying to end the season with the most steals. Yeah. Yeah, Ewing Sachs does not get caught stealing, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Well, pitching. Let's take a look. Where's Here our people? Go. See, we don't have anybody on there. Neither, no, nor do the nemesis pitching two. Okay, Curly Bender's got third best whip. Point nine two. Bellamy yeah. Ball still does too. She got released. She's on waivers and she's in the top ten for whip. Um, and, yeah. And I'm pulling the batting average. Should star be Bellamy Ball? Strikeouts. It's it's a run and gun battle between Hurley Bender and almost Slayer. Yep. And Fran Japani again. She's got one more game. Um, I'd say she's out of it. I don't. I mean, we could possibly see her do a 10, 10, another ten inning. I mean, ten K game. But I don't Hurley, think. Hurley, I don't think she'll Hurley's get over got, thirteen. Hurley's got his and Ans- Ansel Carose. He's he's going to be playing. He's going to be pitching against Bender. So Carose is the he's ninth for in the league for strikeout. That's, and he's, we're going to see both of those guys play tomorrow. Bender's got his last chance to try and be the strikeout king for the season. Very cool. Strikeouts in nine. The big two. Yep. We're doing pretty well. We're doing pretty well. Yeah. I, 
We're at 20 and 20, and our run differential is at a negative three. So I would like to see us end the season uh, with a, you know, in a positive win with more wins than losses. And I'd like us to be, even if it's just plus two in the rough run differential, I'd rather finish in the plus territory than in the negative. Yeah, yeah. Schedule, yeah. Boy, if we could win three out of four. It's all home now. The nemesis. That's going to be a tough game. The Outlaws and the Hot Corners and the Herbert Source we should beat. So, um, although I wouldn't, you are. don't count your chickens because we are, we've already beat them twice, and sometimes the game kind of, yeah, you know, <laughs> you've already won twice, so they can win one. Right. All right. Well, that long game. Then we'll wrap up here from Florida, finish off our regular season road trips. And uh, we'll head back to Phoenix and finish off the season there against the Nemesis. And until then, this is Tommy G. And this is Pete J. And before I let you go, I'm going to say if you want to watch the full game again, head over to Tommy G's gaming channel on YouTube. And he puts together a really nice package of highlights from the previous game. And he does a lot of really cool stuff. So if you want to see the game again and you want to see it with a little bit more spit and polish, You'll want to watch Tommy's uh, feed. So um, this is PJ, and I am saying celebrate the win, but get out of here.